What's up guys, Nightingale here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually making a video because I know this is going to come up a lot in chat this week because we have a new unit on Banner right now. Today uh, was the release date of Marciana from the School of Hard Lock. Um, and there was some other stuff that came up today that we want to talk about real quick. And... It all pertains leading up to anniversary and new players. So sit back with me for just a second and I wanna talk about a couple other units that got put into the game. So we discovered this today on stream, plus a couple leaky pipes really helped out in the long run. But uh, this was actually discovered today on stream. And we were looking at the Nikopedia and I noticed Tia from the story today has been put into the game. Now, Tia is, like is one of the two pops. characters Isn't briefly mentioned adorable? in the story. Then, there is another character that you saw right beside her, a Burst 2, right here. Naga was also oh, no. added into what? the, the game as well. <laughs> now, what this means is they are summonable units on the way. This is important for you to know as a newer player because you may not want to be spending any of your recruitment tickets right now. Now why I wanna point this out is for a couple different reasons. First off, let's go talk about these two units and then you're gonna hear the theory of why there might be something behind this. So first up, let's talk about Tia. These are both missileless uh, characters, so kinda cool that they're not gonna be super um, um, there's not a big uh, competition between the missile uh, recruitment banner stuff, so um, these two could easily fit on there if you need to do them through standard recruitment. But let's talk about her kit real quick. The big thing here that I want to point out is her burst three is at the very bottom, affects all allies, re-enter burst skill stage one. Now, this, I was not familiar with this mechanic because I'll be honest, I have Christmas Rupee, but I've never used her. And chat helped me out today and showed me what this is and it's mind-blowing. So what this does is for anybody who is completely not in the know of this like I was today, what this is is an interesting mechanic. It allows you to get two burst ones off in the same time. So you put this first, it bursts, then the next burst two, or the next burst one will burst, and then um, it will, um, go into the normal burst chain. So you get two burst ones off at once. Now this could be advantageous. Now, why this is interesting is because there's some interesting stuff about these two units kits. So take note that uh, skill one activates when recover covering covers HP affects self, cooldown of burst skill is reduced by 13 seconds, stacks up to two times, which means 26 seconds. Um, last, uh, and uh, the time lasts for 12 seconds. Uh, activates um, when recovering covers HP affects all allies. Attack damage up by 32% for 10 seconds. Um, skill two is activates when landing five normal hits. Affects self uh, covers max HP. 32% of the caster's max HP for um, five seconds. Uh, attract a taunt all enemies. All enemies for five seconds will go to her. Activates when using burst skill affects self. Recovery of covers HP, 21.41% uh, of the caster's final max HP. Recovers 21% of um, attack damage for 10 seconds. And then, now pay attention to the skill because it's gonna make a lot more sense here in just a second. Affects self, generates shield for 35% of caster's final HP for 10 seconds. Affects all allies except self. Generates a shield with 10% of the caster's final um, max HP for 10 seconds, and then the uh, re uh, inner burst one. Now, let's go look at Naga real quick. And again, you can go pull these up. You can look at them in game. There's no hocus pocus, anything like this. This is in your game as well right now. This isn't a data mine or anything like that of me pulling up an unaccessible version of the game. So we go over here to Naga and we take a look at her kit. Um, this gets a little more interesting. Guardian of Friendship activates after 12 normal attacks, affects all allies. Recovery of covers HP by 14.57. Uh, uh, activates when applying shield, affects all allies. Damage dealt when attacking core, 85.17 for 10 seconds. So core damage goes up. 
Uh, support of friendship activates after five normal attacks. Affects two allies with the highest attack. Damage dealt when attacking core up 40.07% for five seconds. Uh, activates after five attacks. Affects two allies units with the lowest HP percentage. Recovers 9.58% of caster's final HP, max HP as HP. All right. And then as long as we're with friends, affects self. Grants Pierce for 10 seconds. Affects all allies. Increases attack by 16.18% of the caster's uh, attack for 10 seconds. Activates when applying shield. Affects all allies. 30 Increases attack by 31.02% of caster's attack for 10 seconds. When you look at these side by side, these units instantly start sounding a lot like two other units you might be very well familiar with or have heard something about at this point. And that is... Noir. Or Blanc and Noir. All right, so why this is important is these two are still technically the best duo combo in the game. There's a certain team setup that you will use with this litter, the bunny twins, plus two burst threes, and you're going to own the game. Now, this isn't me trying to hype stuff up or anything like that. I'm just wanting you to, to, to take note here for a second. These two might be the next team for damage or for people who don't have the bunny twins yet they might end up being that answer for them to get started with. See where we're going here? This looks like they were made for each other based off of what they do. Because you're not gonna put litter in this team, makes sense because they're recovering the cover HP, which is important for certain mechanics and things like that. But what really sucks is this it looks like this is leading up right to anniversary. These two units are going to be bait slash not bait. They could very well not be the next meta team as in replacing Noir and Blanc, but it's could be the next helpful team for a secondary team because it is important to have multiple full teams working that do that do have great synergies and they may very well be that now here's a couple things you need to know none of the three units that are coming out right now are limited all three are going to the general pool which means when it comes time and you want to summon they're all going to be right here under the recruitment tab you'll be able to put them under your wish list one will go into elysian uh uh marciana which is on the which is on banner right now will go to elysian and Missilis will gain um, these two. Tia and Naga will go to Missilis here. That also means that inside of your special um, your special cores right here for your SSRs and your Missilis cores here, they will be inside of those as well. So you will have multiple options of obtaining them later. It's just, I am struggling because I have to do more thinking on this, but I want to point this out just to get you to potentially stop and wait. Because this is what I'm going to do. I want to see when these get released, because right now it looks like, based off of the, um, based off of the event that's coming up, Dazzling Cupid event will be after the School of Hard Lock. And if that is going off of what... Um, you can't hold a candle what we see me. here, which School of Hard Lock has 12 days left as of today. It is the 21st. Um, if we run this down two weeks, week one puts us at the 28th of September. Week two puts us at the 5th of October. Okay, now here's where this can play in. Potentially... This very well could be, I'd have to go back and look at the Bunny Twins. Was that a three week event or was that two? I wanna say it was two. So follow me here. If that's the case, Dazzling Cupid will be the 5th of um, September. 
will be week one. Week two will be the twelfth uh, to the nineteenth, and then there will be one final event leading in to anniversary, which I assume the nineteenth would be the Halloween event if they're going to do it. If they will be some sort of Halloween themed unit um or it's just side story in general um i'm very 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 curious to see what will they do here because anniversary will start on the 2nd of november should be the anniversary patch this is more just to be a warning of there's bait floating out here and I hate to say it, but you two of these the might end up actually being somewhat worth for new players to consider if they don't have Noir and Blanc. So keep an eye out. You don't have to worry about anything yeah. right now, Earth, but let's see what happens as we get closer to Tia and Naga's release. What ends up coming about as far as more information? And especially, it's going to be very crucial to see what happens once they're released. How do they actually perform in-game? Because on paper, the they may look one students? way, because I'm going to be real. Oh. You have Sometimes it just happens. They look great on paper, they suck in real life. It's the nature of games. So, let's see what happens. This is just meant to be a short video. Um, this is not to force you to summon, but more of a... Should you summon? I have no idea. I'm trying to figure that out myself. I don't have the resources to pity either one of these. But it's got my attention. It's got me enough to where I'm invested where I want to warn you to potentially save your tickets. Maybe these end up being a lot better as they come out. We'll see as the community starts getting their hands on them. Um... But on paper, it sounds something like you want to watch out for. And if the worst case scenario, you wait till they go on anniversary banner, go full deep into the anniversary's banner, potentially get these, and then put them on your wish list and try to finish them off. There's nothing wrong with that. Because I'm going to be real, once anniversary drops, there's not going to be much coming till probably mid, till end, let's say mid to end March to April when we're starting to get close to the six month anniversary thing or the like year and a half at that point. So you'll have a little bit of time to just go straight into um, straight into normal banner to potentially try to get some of these units um, once we get past that. But who knows, they may do a New Year's unit and uh, you'll want to save for that. So there's always something because Modernia dropped right at the end of, yeah, Modernia dropped right at the end of December. So you never know. Um, so let's see. Let's see what happens. Just take caution. That's all I'm trying to do. Not trying to get you hyped up. Not trying to tell you to go blow your resources on this. Please do not say I told you to go summon for these. I'm just saying, hold your summons. There's a... Winter is coming. Okay? Let's just put it that way. Winter is coming. So, you guys take care. We'll see you in the next one.